Hello friends, let us now learn about the second part of this lecture. Let us learn about cathode. Okay, so first, first what is cathode? Cathode is a negative terminal of an x-ray tube. So we have already said there is a glass envelope. X-ray tube is actually a glass envelope and in the glass envelope there is an anode and there is a cathode. Okay, so this is the cathode and when both these through the to, through the anode and cathode whenever a high potential difference or current is passed current and high potential difference is passed through the cathode and anode then electrons are released from the cathode these electrons will start uh, they will when they reach when they have certain amount of acceleration they will now hit the anode and once they hit the anode then the actual x-rays are emitted okay so this is the normal principle of an x-ray tube so what is seen in cathode cathode is sometimes also referred to as filament also cathode and filament are actually used interchangeably so if you see these two cathode and anode are connected to a high voltage current and this high potential difference is nothing but voltage and they are connected to a voltage of around 10 volts and they have a current this once they are connected, connected to a voltage of 10 volts current of around 3 to 5 amperes will pass through this wire okay so through this wire it reaches the filament okay so when the current flows through the wire that is when the current flows through the wire this current will heat the wire when the wire is heated this this when this filament is heated this filament will produce the x-rays so if you see the in the x-ray tube the current in the x-ray tube here the current in the x-ray tube is actually measured has 1 milliampere is it is actually measured in milliamperes milliamperes is the uh, units used for current in anode tube sorry, current in x-ray tube current in x-ray tube is mainly measured in milliamperes so that means 1 milliampere is nothing but 1 by 1000 amperes that is 0 0.001 amperes right so this is actually the amount of electrons so this tube current whenever we give a certain amount of current okay to the x-ray tube so these are nothing but this will help in release of electrons so if we have to have more electrons then we have to give more tube current that means if we produce if we give 100 milliamperes of current to this x-ray tube it may produce some x electrons then in order to produce more number of electrons so if we want more number of electrons so it produces x electrons and it will produce some amount of x rays think that some y amounts of y, y uh, amounts of x rays so if we double the tube current which is given to this x ray tube so this will produce 2x number of electrons or it will pr produce more electrons and this will also produce more x rays so the production of x rays is indirectly dependent on the electrons so the pro so these electrons emission is actually depends upon the current that is given through to the x-ray tube so the more current that you give to the x-ray tube the more electrons are emitted so the when more x-rays when more x electrons are emitted they will hit the anode more and this will result in release of more x-rays okay so this is the main thing so next next as we have already said we should learn some important points about the filament right what is filament filament is nothing but the cathode so we have the cathode here and this is the arrow so this is the cathode okay cathode or filament is actually made up of tungsten number one it is made up of tungsten wire and it has a diameter of 0 0.2 mm in diameter and this is coiled 
to form a vertical spiral this is called to form a vertical spiral with around a diameter of 0.2 cm and a length of 1 cm or less less than 1 cm so the tungsten wire diameter if you see the diameter of wire it is 0.2 mm and this is coiled in a vertical spiral in such a way it produces uh, it forms 0.2 cm in diameter and one less than 1 cm in length so when electricity or when uh, potential difference or current current and potential difference is passed through the x ray tube through this x ray tube this will result in emission of electrons how first whenever the current passes through this tube one important thing that happens is this filament which is the tungsten filament starts to get heated okay when the tungsten filament starts to get heated so what is this tungsten filament contains it contains nothing but atoms right okay these atoms will you are giving a uh, current and this will result in generation of heat so this atoms will absorb the thermal energy when they absorb the thermal energy these these atoms are nothing but uh, a, a nucleus with electrons so these electrons will now are absorbing this thermal energy now these electrons will acquire certain amount of energy so with that energy these electrons can can just they will start you know uh, they will start coming out of this metal surface so that is one thing that happens so electrons will start coming out of the metal surface so we will see how what happens next so i am drawing the same diagram again and again in order to understand properly so when a potential difference of current is applied so this is cathode which is negative and anode okay which is positive now now in this whenever you pass current through this uh, to this uh, to the x ray tube the cathode will get heated when cathode will get heated this will release certain amount of thermal energy what is this thermal energy is nothing but heat so this heat is absorbed by the atom now the atom is nothing but nucleus with some electrons so these electrons now absorb the thermal energy once they absorb the thermal energy this these electrons from the metal surface they start escaping they will absorb the thermal energy and these electrons will start uh, coming out they absorb the thermal energy and they will start coming out from its orbit so the electrons will uh, move out and they will come out of the metal surface but they cannot move until the anode okay they don't have sufficient amount of energy to move till anode but they have they will acquire certain amount of energy to come out of the metal surface and these electrons will form a cloud around the cathode okay so this electron cloud which is produced uh by the process by the process of absorption of thermal energy by the atom is called as edison's effect okay first the, there are two things which you have to understand in this lecture number 1 thermionic effect thermionic emission what is this thermionic emission this is the process by which the atom will absorb the thermal energy and electrons are released from the surface of the metal so therm that is called as therm ionic emission this is the emission of electrons by absorbing the thermal energy so this thermal energy is absorbed by atom which is nothing but the electron which is the main thing that is absorbing the a thermal energy is the electron and as a result the electron comes out of its orbit 
to a certain distance away from the uh, from away from the metal surface okay so thermionic emission is when electron takes its, takes the thermal energy and it will move away from its orbit is called as thermionic emission okay now this once it moves away once it comes out of its atom once it comes the electrons comes out of its metal surface these electrons many electrons will come not one or two right few electrons will come out of its metal surface by the process of thermionic emission and they form the so called as electron cloud around the cathode so they will form the electron cloud around the cathode and this electron cloud is called as edison effect okay these are two important things which you have to see the electron cloud which is formed is called as edison effect whereas the process by which the electron will absorb thermal energy and they will emit the electron that process is called as thermionic emission now the tungsten so here what is used as cathode the cathode here is mainly the tungsten molecule tungsten is used as cathode so where is electron coming from it is nothing but the cathode right the electron that we get is from the cathode from cathode we are getting the electrons so tungsten is an element it this tungsten has to be heated to around 2200 degrees celsius to emit the electron so for this electron to come out of its orbit the tungsten atom requires to be heated up to 2200 degrees celsius so if you see the in the x ray tube we use tungsten or some alloys of tungsten okay why because there are three reasons for using tungsten as the cathode which every one of us have to understand number 1 any metal if we try to heat the metal up to 2200 degree celsius it will melt right but tungsten has a very high melting point the melting point of tungsten is around 3370 degree celsius so as a result 2200 degree celsius is okay for tungsten to and as a result it can emit electrons so at that melting point of 2200 degree celsius tungsten will not melt because it requires even more higher temperature of around 3370 degrees to emit the electrons number 2 this tungsten because it has high melting point it can be drawn or made into a thin wire because it is very very strong okay number 2 this tungsten has very little tendency to vaporize because of its little tendency to vaporize there is high or inc increased life expectancy of the uh, x ray tube the increased life expectancy of the x ray tube is because of this tungsten filament okay now this is about the thermionic effect and edison effect let let me just repeat this process again so that it is very very clear for everyone so what actually happens is when the cathode and anode are connected to this um, battery or any you know when the current supply is given to the cathode and anode when electricity is given the electrons will pass to the cathode and they will start heating the cathode which is nothing but tungsten here once the tungsten is heated so with the amount of this current this tungsten gets heated tungsten contains atom inside the atom we have electrons so heat is nothing but thermal energy so this thermal energy or heating of or heating of th th tungsten atom now the tungsten atom will acquire certain amount of energy so once this tungsten atom is heated to around 2200 degrees celsius the tungsten will remove its electron the electron will acquire certain amount of energy and this electron will come out of its orbital right once the electron comes out of its orbit it 
does not have sufficient amount of energy to reach the anode but this an electron will come out of its orbit and when more and more electrons come out of its orbit so the process by which the electrons are emitted uh, by absorption of thermal energy is called as thermionic emission number 2 when the electrons are emitted these electrons will um, form an electron cloud around the cathode because they don't have sufficient amount of energy to reach the anode but they have sufficient amount of energy to come out of their orbitals so as a result these electrons will come out of their orbitals and they form an electron cloud around the cathode and this electron cloud which is formed around the cathode or around the surrounding the filament produced by thermionic emission is called as edison's effect now there are two more uh, terms which we have to understand okay so for that see now we have understood thermionic emission and edison's effect so what happens is the electron cloud is formed in the cathode just in the vicinity of the cathode the electrons which are emitted from the tungsten filament will form a small cloud just beside the filament right now these are these what are these electrons these are negatively charged electrons right this cathode what is its charge it is also negatively charged so what happens is slowly when we switch on the first when when the when the cathode x ray tube is switched off we see this thing the x ray tube is switched off now the x ray tube is switched on so once the x ray tube is switched on the current will flow through the uh, through this connecting wire and then to the cathode now the cathode gets heated this will produce thermal energy heat is nothing but thermal energy so when the tungsten filament is heated what happens the atoms are heated so this electrons will absorb the thermal energy and they come out of their orbit one by one each and every electron will try to come out of its orbit okay so as a result when a group of electrons come out of its orbit then the electrons will form an electron cloud around the cathode and this is called as edison's effect this is true but how many electrons can come not all electrons right in the whole tungsten wire we will have some hundreds and thousands of not even hundreds some millions of tung tungsten atom will be present in the tungsten wire now and each tungsten um, will have lots of electrons right so not all the electrons can come out of the tungsten wire there should be a limit what is the limit the main limit is when the electrons when sufficient amount of electrons have come out of the tungsten atom and formed an electron cloud this these electrons we call it as space charge this collection of negative electrons negatively charged electrons present around the cathode is called as space charge so what is space charge space charge is the collection of negatively charged electrons around the tungsten filament is called as space charge now this collected negatively charged electrons will prevent see this is cathode is also negative okay meaning this is also negative here okay so this whole thing is negative and the electrons are also negative so even if you heat it more these electrons could not be emitted because of the negative charge because of same charges will if there is same charge what happens opposite charges will attract but same charges will repel so obviously if the cathode tries to emit one more electron so the cathode when if cathode tries to emit one more electron so that emission of electron is stopped by this electron cloud so this electron cloud will limit the em extra em even more amount of electrons to um, to come out of the filament so what is that called that is called has space charge effect okay when and one more amount of electron tries to come out of the orbit these these space charge the electrons which are present here will stop the electrons from emission so let me draw again not completely but a small you know some one diagrammatic representation just think that this is a tungsten atom 
tungsten nucleus and we have an electron okay so this is the final shell i'm not drawing lots of shells this is the final shell this is the electron cloud which is already present around the tungsten filament so imagine this is a big tungsten filament like this it's going on okay this is one atom now this atom has been heated to such a level to emit to emit its electron so what happened but there are lots of electrons surrounding it so as a result when it tries to emit so when when this electron tries to come out of its um come come out of its orbit it has uh, it has absorbed thermal energy okay and uh, that is heat it has been absorbed by this electron now this electron wants to come out of its orbit it has enough energy to come out of its orbit but what is happening the electrons here are also negative charges both these negative charges will repel each other so these electrons will stop one more additional electron to come out of its orbit so this effect is called has space charge effect and the electrons which are making it the electron cloud which is stopping the electron to come out is called has space charge so these negative electrons are called as space charge whereas the tendency to limit the limit the emission of electrons from its orbit is called has space charge effect okay now now what happens is that but still the current is passes through the filament so the filament will get heated more and more more and more more and more in such a way that one electron will get its more acceleration so the electron will acquire more and more energy more and more energy now when the electron acquires lots of energy in such a way that this will um acquire lots of energy so that it will um, you know it it will overcome this space charge effect and it will start flowing coming out of the tungsten uh, you know tungsten atom and it starts hitting the anode so this is how the electron is emitted it's not just you give or you give current and the electron starts to emit no then the space charge is from that is lots of electrons first electrons will get some amount of you know energy to come out of its orbital it comes out of its orbital and forms a forms an electron cloud around the filament now when when this electron cloud is formed this electron cloud will limit the amount of electrons to emit out now this electron will uh, will get more and more energy more and more energy more and more energy once it acquires the energy to overcome the electron cloud then it will go it will accelerate towards the anode and it will hit the anode when the electric rays are produced that is when the x rays are produced now what happens is now the this electron has emitted out of the you know tungsten atom okay so we will see what happens now see now the, this is the filament which is drawing it very big and now the one of the electron from the filament has gone out of the electron cloud okay it has gone beyond this electron cloud and this has reached the one of one of the you know most powerful which has gained lots of energy and it has reached to the anode now what happens mainly is there is one positive charge which is present which is left here right one positive charge is acquired because the filament now acquired one positive charge because the one atom has lost its energy so has there is one one atom has lost its lost its, its electron so as a result it got its positive charge now this atom will will now attract one of its electron which is present in the space charge the these negative charged electron cloud from this negative charged electron cloud this atom will will attract the electron and this electron will come and it will go into its orbit in such a way the lost electron is regained by the filament again when the filament is heated to the emission temperature one more electron from the uh, again when the filament is is heated to the emission temperature one more so few more electrons 
from one more electron from each orbit or few electrons from each atom are emitted they will acquire energy so they get emitted and they will go into the they will go and hit the anode once they hit the anode once they go out of its orbit these atoms will acquire positive charge and that positive charge has been gained by this electrons which are obtained which are present in the space charge and they will they will you know attract the electron And, and, and so they will attract the electron and this electron will go and go and it will go into the orbit of the atom so in this way the equilibrium is maintained so the equilibrium is maintained that is some electrons are given out into the anode and few electrons are uh, taken back by the tungsten wire so that the equilibrium is maintained in the in the same matter that is where there is emission of electrons and at the same time the number of electrons which are emitting the emitted from the filament is equal to the number of electrons which the atom is acquiring so number of electrons returning uh, to the filament or is equal to the number of electrons being emitted as a result the space charge effect always remains constant okay so i think you have understood something about the thermionic emission so there are four things thermionic emission edison's effect space charge effect space charge now now the electrons will go and hit the anode now the main important thing is not just one electron is emitted here very actually many many electrons gain energy and they will get emitted they will they are emitted from the uh tungsten filament and they will reach the anode and they will hit the anode okay now uh this flow of electrons if you see in this in this diagram this is the tungsten wire so let me draw this again for the next why we need it one that so you, you have understood how the electrons are emitted now what is important is uh, about the modification of the of this x-ray tube so we will see how the x-ray tube is modified uh, especially uh, in regard to cathode that is also important so this is the cathode this is the anode now current is applied okay now what happens is this cathode is actually a negative charge whereas anode is positive charge so this cathode now it is it is emitting the electrons how you know okay now when the when the electrons are emitted from the cathode the electrons which are emitted see this cathode is a wire which starts from here ends from here even if you assume okay some of the electrons may go like this okay they acquire energy they'll go in the direction which they like right so if they go in different different directions then how many electrons are hitting the target anode very few electrons will hit the target anode so there are there are many electrons which acquired a sufficient amount of energy and they started accelerating towards the cathode but they towards the anode but they are not reaching the anode right so many electrons are getting wasted so what should we do we should decrease the amount of electrons to go wasted so for this the scientists have got one more solution that is focusing cup so they have modified this tube in a different way so i am drawing the same tube oh, i must have used black color but okay this one i am using it this color so they have put something called as focusing cup okay and in this focusing cup they have put the tungsten filament okay now the tungsten filament is kept inside this focusing cup like this the focusing cup has is like this okay and they have put the tungsten filament inside the focusing cup and this is anode we will learn about anode in our next class and current is applied now if you see this is the tungsten filament the electrons the there is obviously 
when the when the when the current passes some of the electrons will acquire energy to have the to form to acquire energy to leave its atom once it acquires thermal energy to leave its atom the emission of electrons uh, electrons acquire energy and they come out of its orbital that is called as thermionic effect once they once the electrons are emitted by absorption of thermal energy that is called as thermionic effect this thermionic effect will result in production of uh, this production of negatively charged electrons around the filament and these this electron cloud is called as edison's effect now this negatively charged charges will contain something called as space charge now this electrons will now this cloud of negatively charged electrons will prevent this collection of negatively charged electrons is called as space charge now this negatively charged electrons will prevent more electrons to emit from the filament and that is called a space charge effect now the now the filament starts to get heated more and more and more and more and and now the one of the electron from this filament will go will acquire sufficient amount of energy to overcome the space charge uh, overcome this negatively charged and it will uh, get lots of energy and it will go towards the anode right so here one more electron is going like this even now if one more electron has got sufficient amount of energy it will not go at all because of this focusing cup this will only limit the amount of electrons which are because the focusing cup is surrounding the filament and the focusing cup will only allow the electrons to glow go in only one direction and they prevent the electrons to go in different other directions okay this focusing cup what is this focusing cup made up of this focusing cup is actually made up of nickel so this is nothing but focusing cup this will prevent the electrons to go in other directions and it will help the electrons to focus on to a particular anode okay particular target so this focusing cup is mainly made up of nickel okay now uh, nowadays so this is important thing about focusing cup nowadays we have started using more types of uh, x ray tubes so one such modification in the cathode is usage of double filament so if this is the focusing cup the same thing i'm drawing here so this is the focusing cup i'm drawing in this color and we have two filaments okay one is the large size filament the other is the small size filament so this is called has double filament so in this the filament is actually spiral wire we know right and one one after the other so if we if, so i think that we need large amount of exposure okay so for large amount of x ray exposure we use larger films for smaller amount of x ray exposure we can use smaller films so if we use double film we can use a uh, small amount of exposure we use smaller films and larger amount of exposure if we need then we can use larger films so double filament in a focusing cup has also been uh, designed in the present day x ray tubes present day x ray tubes some also have triple filament also not just double filament but even triple filament x ray yeah. tubes have also been developed now in this in angiographic tube we have angiography right so in angiography angiography ek tubes we have two focus spots in angiographic tube
we'll learn about the sanchographic cube in the next in, in coming lectures because it is a little uh, complicated so this is about the main things about the x-ray tube um, cathode so one more important thing is about the cathode is that let me draw the the x-ray tube once more so this is the focusing cup so from now i'm drawing the x-ray tube with focusing cup because we have introduced the concept of focusing cup Now, in the focusing cup, we have the actual filament. So, this hole is the focusing cup. Okay. It will allow the X-rays only to move in one direction and it will not allow the X-rays to go in other directions. This focusing cup is made up of nickel. Now, uh, what is important is that this filament here... The main important thing in production of X-rays is heating up of filament. When the filament heats up, the filament is nothing but tungsten, right? At one point of time, this tungsten, the filament, when it gets heated up, heated up, heated up, heated up, and slowly the tungsten wire will become thinner and thinner and thinner on heating for longer periods. So that is one important thing. Number two, heating up when it heats up, obviously it breaks. So, when it heats, it becomes thin and it will break. So, our aim is to prevent the tungsten to he get heated for a longer period of time, right? So, how do we prevent the tungsten to get heated for a longer period of time? This can be done by one way. There is something called as automatic filament boosting circuit. So, here in automatic filament boosting circuit, you are heating the filament and if x-rays are not produced that means if exposure is not made so you see once you turn on the x-ray machine you will have to make the exposure right only when you make the exposure even more amount of current goes through the x-ray machine and the electrons will get sufficient amount of charge to accelerate and hit the anode so if you have turned on the machine but the exposure is not made then the x-ray circuit is made in such a way that low amount of current of only 5 milliamperes will flow through the x-ray tube low amount of current of only 5 milliamperes will flow through the x-ray tube and only that amount will heat the filament okay so this amount of energy is sufficient for producing fluoroscopy and when we require large amount of tube currents for production of normal proper X-rays, then large amount of uh, filament current should be increased. Then we increase the filament current to the required value so that the amount of X-rays are obtained. So in automatic filament boosting circuit, when you switch on the X-ray machine without making an exposure, then only a small amount of current passes through the filament to prevent it being heated for longer periods of time. That is solved solution of the first problem. Number two, what actually happens is one more problem with using this filament is that slowly and slowly tungsten is vaporized from the filament. Though the tungsten vaporizes very slowly but still at one point of time it, this tungsten molecule will definitely start vaporizing so when this tungsten molecule will vaporize from the filament and it will reach the glass obviously it will vaporize it will you know go into the vacuum it's everything is vacuum right so it will start and it will stick onto the glass walls right so once the tungsten will get get out of the uh, filament and when it sticks onto the glass wall then we call it as 
aging tubes that is slowly the tube gets aged and this will acquire a bronze color sunburn okay when the bronze colored sun sunburn or tungsten uh, has uh, is vaporized and it when it sticks onto the glass tube what happens obviously you are using this nick this um, you know cat, uh, cat, from the anode x rays are produced the x rays which are produced will now have to travel through this tungsten so obviously the quality of x rays which are produced has been decreased right and whenever there is presence of metal on the glass so obviously we know the melting point of glass and metal uh, these will also there will be some problem in between the mel melting point also so nowadays the x ray tubes are developed in such a way that the deposition of the tungsten onto the tube wall is minimized so these are the two problems with cathode one heating might break number two on vaporization of the metal it might come and deposit onto the glass uh, envelope resulting in aging of the tube or forming bronze colored sunburn so the x rays which are produced uh, the quality of x rays is reduced because they have to pass through the tungsten um, coating thank you